the college basketball season has has been a fun one. Uh, it is. There's been one where it's been one where there's been no team of dominance where, where you want to talk about Purdue or not, but they have not dominated. Houston has had a great run. We don't know they haven't you know played the same type of schedules other people, but they're they're very good. Alabama uh, is one of those teams, but no one has really like scared the bejesus out of anybody. And and then you got the other end, Kentucky, Duke, North Carolina. Um, unbelievably struggling to get into the tournament this year. Yeah, I mean, nobody has separated themselves, um, that's for sure. I think we've had a decent amount of parity in recent years, but even more so this year. I mean, so if, if there's a team that I think that you really um, like, you can probably get pretty good odds on them, uh, futures odds, to win the uh, the national championship. Because if – I mean, I could go through the major conferences and probably pick – two or three teams in every major conference that's good enough to get to a final four. Uh, but if you ask me to pick the favorite right now, I can, I couldn't say anybody. I mean, Alabama's probably the most talented team, but you know, you got a lot of, they kind of a lot of freshmen Two their two of their top three players, I think are freshmen and they've never done it ever. I mean, the pressure is going to be mounting on that team. Uh, I remember when they had a really good team in 1987, Wimp Sanderson was the coach and they were the number one seed in the South regional. And they came up here to freedom hall and played and Rick Patino and that Providence team took them out. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. It's going to be fun. And all starts four weeks from last night, I think is the first four, right? Yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday. Could the world handle if Alabama won a basketball national championship? <laughs> I don't think they'd handle it very well in Lexington. But <laughs> I don't think they'd handle it very well anywhere. Right. Um, you know, people have seen what Nate Oates can do, and, and oh, this isn't the I, first, It's not like the first time they've been good. They've been good since he's been there. So I've loved Nate Oates uh, since he was at Buffalo. I, I, I was mm -hmm. like, oh, God, someone better get him. And uh, Alabama was smart. Not only was they smart enough to get him, but then they were smart enough to lock him up uh, soon afterwards. Um, right. For that, the Big Ten Conference race has been uh, a fun one. Well, not really fun. Purdue got out and got away. Boy, you could coulda, woulda, should it all you want, you know. But all you have to think about for Indiana is Iowa. Uh, there's no other game. You, you, the Iowa loss, that one right there. You take that one off the books, and then you look across the way at Purdue. Man, they escaped in overtime against Nebraska. They escaped with a last-second shot against Ohio State. Um, and I don't recall what happened with Michigan State. There was something there that uh, they barely escaped. But, um, but boy, this could be a, a completely different story right now. But it's still close to being what it could be because Maryland you, fans have to hope for Maryland to do what they've done all year. Win at home. If they're able to do that, then that changes this conference race in a hurry. Yeah. Um, and Maryland, I'm pretty sure the only home game they've lost was to UCLA. It is. So, and they'll have a big crowd for that. They're, they've got a, they've got a very, uh, um, what the right word, a vibrant fan base. They get up for big games. It's a tough place to play on the road. They, they'll – I think they'll probably fill that place for the Purdue game and want to have. Well, there chance. has to be Rick. I mean, how's Maryland's a, a a good team, but mm -hmm. they're not in the upper. You know, we're not we're not talking about Maryland. We've been talking about Indiana and Purdue and Illinois, uh, but Maryland's just kind of been just hitting there. But they win at home. They no one can beat them at home right. for some reason, and that is what's kept them up there so high. Uh, is do they have a real shot at beating this Purdue team? Yeah, I give them a solid. I don't know what the Ken Palm numbers say, but I give them a solid forty percent chance to win at home. Um, you know, you saw the way they played against IU; they they controlled most of that game. Um, so I think they can do it. And uh, you know, we'll have to see if it's accurate or not. But people have suggested over the last three games that that. Um, the Big Ten coaches have figured out the best way to attack Purdue, which is to pressure their guards, right. and their guards have struggled. And I think we've talked about this for weeks, that 
I think, you know, Smith, Braden Smith and, and, and lawyer are both terrific players. I mean, they, they really are. They, they, they'll probably be all first team, big 10 all freshmen, but it's hard to win in the NCAA tournament with two freshman guards, unless, you know, one of them is a, I can think of Mike Bibby or somebody that, you know, is definitely going to be a pro and those, you can't say those guys are going to be pros. And I think opposing teams are going to do what, you know, Northwestern and Indiana and, um, what was the game in between? They barely won. They, was it Iowa? I don't remember. People have, well, they, didn't, didn't they Iowa crossed. fall behind and then make a big rally and make it a little bit closer? But anyway, pressure the Purdue guards. Make yep. them sure they can handle pressure. And uh, that's that's the way to attack them. I'm not saying it's always going to beat them, but it's going to make them uncomfortable. And Painter yeah, should and- be. Peter should be a, a more prepared for it now, and in some ways it's better to find it out now than it is to find it out in March and do, make some adjustments. I, I'm surprised it took people this long. I mean, right. uh, I'm like, you got two freshman guards, man. You got to get up in their face uh, and, and keep and, – and they also double-teamed Edie, Edie pretty well. I mean, they were up in his face, and, and that seemed – it kept him from being able to get – into to, to to do anything to move to make a move they they got under him and that is what they stopped him they stopped him from moving they were taking the ball from him uh in those last five minutes it they really put purdue looked like they were just confused yeah and that's why it'll come down at some point to first and and gillis and brandon newman and those guys to step up and hit shots i mean i i don't consider ethan morton a scorer at all He's really, he's a minimal force on offense other than ball handling and passing. He's not somebody, you can put your weakest defender on him. But, you know, Purdue, what do they have now? Uh, two, still a three-game lead in the league? I don't even think. With Indiana has five losses, Purdue has two. Yes. He had a pretty good three. comfort zone. But Indiana got ahead of, is Indiana it ahead of, is it, it's three, I guess now. Yeah, Northwestern, Rutgers, and Indiana, they've lost three. So a two-game lead. Uh, so, yeah, you know, Indiana got a benefit last night cause Rutgers lost, uh, and Illinois lost. So that helped them in their quest for, I think, which is the most attainable goal, which is finishing the top four of the big 10 and get a double buy. Yeah. And you know, because of that, because of this season, because I mentioned this earlier, of, the, of this league being whether people want to acknowledge or not, Purdue is of course at the top, but right. they're not, they're not beatable. They're not, they're not uh, that dominant. I think this big 10 tournament is going to be a great one and it could be Indiana's first big 10 tournament title. I think this is their probably going to be their best chance in a long time. They're going to most likely receive the double buy and, uh, I think they got a good shot this year, man. Yeah. I mean, although I did hear last night, I think last year, three of the four teams that got the double by lost their first game in Indianapolis last year. So some people will say, you know, you put yourself at a disadvantage because the team you're playing has already played a game or two and kind of more relaxed and stuff. Uh, but yeah, if, you know, winning a, a Big Ten tournament is really hard because you're going to have to beat three good teams to do it. Uh, you know, and Indiana's never done that. And if they ever got to the championship game, all the talk about Indiana's never been in the championship game except for one time. Yeah, that was back in the, what, 99 or 2000? Against, whatever. Steve, against Steve, Steve Alford, Alford wasn't it? Too. Yeah, yeah, it was against Iowa. Um, that There'll be all that talk about it, but um, that'd be a – That'd be a big accomplishment for Mike Woodson to do that. People would remember this team for that if they could win the Big Ten tournament because Indiana's Big Ten tournament history is so terrible. Oh, it's awful. Unbelievable awful. I think Bob Knight set the precedent with that by just his disdain. He He didn't want to go to it. Yeah, yeah. I think there's some truth to that. But, you know, they had other good teams like the the two really good teams, three really good teams that Crean had. I mean – he never even got to the tournament championship game, right? It's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah it, it's unbelievable. I was there the one year where some dude from Michigan hit a shot from the corner, I guess, right at the buzzer to beat him. Was that the was that the Yogi Ferrell team? I think it was. 
Is that the Wisconsin, one of the Wisconsin, one of the Minnesota losses or Wisconsin? Minnesota God, losses dang. the year that Dockich uh, was the interim coach when that dude picked up the ball off the Jeez. ground. And up and went in. Hoff, Hoff, Hoff Harbor, whatever his name was. Oh, man, yes. <laughs> Mike Woodson has done under his short tenure here. You talk about it, be, that would be a great accomplishment as it would. But if, and I'd have to go back and do the research, but think about all the, the lists that have stopped under his tenure, the, you know, the, the streak to Purdue, the streak to Michigan, uh, there have been a the streak to Rutgers, all these right. streaks that have been ended. There have been so many streaks that have been ended um, right. and things that they've done that they have not done in seven years since the 2016 big 10 last big 10 championship team or seven years, however long it's been. Um, they're playing that well They're uh, That's, that's going back a while. Uh, that's almost two graduating classes of school of people uh, uh, here it's for them. So um, you, Mike Woodson has to get a ton of credit uh, for, for what has already happened. And whether people want to admit it or not, dude, look at the results. This, this stuff has happened. Look how long it did not happen. It could not happen. So there's a reason for that change. Coach of the year however, is going to be a race, and it's going to be a three-man race that I don't think is going to be decided until the very end. Um, I think tonight is going to go a, a long way if Mike Whitson goes to Northwestern and beats Northwestern as well as they have done and overachieved. I don't know if that puts him ahead of Chris Collins or not because Northwestern was not expected to do what they're doing. So that gives him a bump up. And then you've got a mad painter with Purdue. They weren't picked to win the Big Ten. Indiana was. So right. I, I, it's going to be odd how people decide to vote, but I think it's going to be how what happens. What happens if Indiana goes to Purdue and beats Purdue at the end of the year? Um, I, I don't know, but what are, what are your thoughts on that right now? Yeah, I mean – my thoughts are it'll be decided over the next, what, two and a half weeks of the regular season. That's all that's left. Um, early on, I thought it was going to be Shrewsbury. He, he was off to a really good start when Penn State yeah. was playing well. They've kind of dropped back now. Um, but I agree with you. I think it'll, it'll probably be Painter or Collins with Woodson in third third place right now uh, because I think people, are, they look past the injuries and they'll say, you know, he was supposed to win anyway. But um, if Purdue goes out and finishes it out, you know, and, and Ken Palm, believe it or not, has Purdue winning the league by four games. He's got Purdue finishing 16 and four, and then Indiana, Northwestern, and Maryland all 12 and eight. So if Purdue wins the Big Ten with a four game cushion. I think it'll be Painter. Um, but Northwestern will, will be in the discussion if they win tonight. And speaking of first, there's another first that Woodson needs to achieve, and that's tonight. He's never beaten Northwestern. Oh, that's, that's a, <laughs> I can only chuckle at that one, man, <laughs> because of lost three in a row to Northwestern. And, and I think the, the one they won was in double overtime. So Chase Adige yeah. has made a career of hurting Indiana for sure. And Boo Booey isn't far behind. So that's, that's the key to the game tonight. Galloway and Hood Shafino have to bring it defensively and not let those guys get rolling because they they got rolling in the assembly hall and they got rolling last year in that game that they won when Indiana was shorthanded up in Evanston. So we'll see if you know it's a good time exactly. to play them. I mean, Purdue just be, I mean Northwestern just beat Purdue on Sunday, and I'm sure everybody on campus is telling them how great they are. And now they're in you know, you're in the NCAA tournament and you're almost ranked and blah 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 blah. And I thought Woodson did a great job after the game. Said yeah, great win, you guys. Uh, be happy with it now. Forget about it and get ready to go play Northwestern. Absolutely, uh, Chase Audige and uh, uh, Boo Booey. Uh, the reason, big reason, why they were able to knock off Purdue. Uh, but exactly, they they can shoot, they can get to the rim, they can create, and they're active. Uh, but they are coming off of a very emotional win. And last year up there. Uh, when I was up there, it was it was probably uh, it may have been a, a a more pro IU crowd than it was Northwestern. Now it probably won't be that way this year because there's more of a Northwestern output. But I still it at worst it'll be sixty forty. I bet. 
Yeah, Indiana's always had a huge turnout anytime they've ever played at Northwestern because there's so many IU alums that live in Chicago and Chicago, Northwest Indiana area, and that's their one chance to see a game. Uh, and, and they go and, and turn out and watch the game. It, you know, the thing that Indiana needs, and I, I haven't done enough research to prove it statistically, but my sense has been that when they go on the road, usually Hood Shafino and, and Jackson Davis play at the same level, if not higher. But the other guys, Galloway doesn't seem to shoot as well away from Assembly Hall. Bates doesn't seem to be as, you know, dynamic away from Assembly Hall. Um, Cop, I don't think it's as big, but it's Galloway and Bates and Geronimo and those dudes. They seem to play better at home than they do on the road. Yeah, they get relaxed and just kind of fall back into a watching. Seem like I'm going to watch Trace and right. uh, and and, and uh, Jalen do their thing. Uh, all the while now, Miller Cop was playing good defense. Those guys were doing other things, but they they cannot win. You cannot win sustained games like that. You you can get away right. with a one off here and a one off there, but you can't win back to back. You're not going to win six straight. You're not going to win three straight in the Big Ten tournament doing that i don't think against different styles um and they're they're going to need some scoring tonight because northwestern's going to score yeah they are yeah it's a big game i mean they they win this game they you know they they separate themselves from northwestern because they're both they're tied for them right now for second place you lose you drop back into that pack uh you know you 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 move yourself a little closer for that double buy and you're still indiana has slowly but surely moved up the seed lines on a lot of these NCAA tournament brackets and a win against Northwestern on the road would be a nice credential. And, you know, I think they're pretty much of a consistent five seed right now, but, you know, depending on all these opportunities there's and their schedule's brutal <laughs> down the stretch, they have a chance to move up to a, you know, four seed or, 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 you know, even higher if they keep winning. Yeah. A lot of people have them as a four seed right now. Okay. Uh, Mike, Mike, of course, I think has them as a three. Uh, That's crazy because did he didn't he not even have him in like two or three weeks ago. <laughs> I, someone said that, and I'm like, that that it's can't true. be that can't it's be true. Real. He was like the one guy that didn't have him in for a long time. And now somebody he's said it to me, and I'm like, that cannot be real. And uh, and Mike's on with us each Tuesday. I, I didn't ask him about it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a major jump, but and that's why, well, that's why I said earlier, I said, trust me, he's no homer. Don't think he's a homer of any kind. I no. said, he doesn't give you anything, baby. You got to earn it. Uh, so they must've earned it in his eyes, but, uh, there's certainly, and that's another thing is getting the eyes of the national people, which they have not, they Indiana has not, uh, after the Arizona and the Kansas games, I think that right. people just kind of. Put put Indiana same aside. Old Indiana. Same old Indiana, yeah. not good enough to beat good teams. And and, and that's not I really the Dan case. O'Neill, the athletic, was there last week for the Rutgers game, so she must be doing some kind of IU story. I haven't seen it yet, but I know she was there for the Northwestern game. 